again and welcome to Last Time Studios. Top 10 things you might not know. Daddle Adam. Daddle Adam. Daddle Adam. Daddle Adam. Daddle Adam. The creepy and the kooky. Mysterious and spooky. They're all together rooky. That's right, it's the Adams family. So let's get started with number 10. Number 10, it was the kid's idea. The idea for the film came when Scott Rudin, head of production at 20th Century Fox, was riding in a van with other company executives after a film screening. All the studio chiefs were traveling in the van, including Tom Chirac, when Tom's kid started singing the Adams family theme tune. Rudin told the Los Angeles Times, suddenly everyone in the van was singing the theme, letter perfect, note for note. The next day, Rudin proposed to Dilla and Goldberg that they make an Adams Family movie, and they went for it. Number 9, going to extremes. To make Angelica Hudson's eyes look like the original Morticia, the makeup artist had to attach strings with spirit gum to the outside of the corners of Angelica's eyes and anchor the strings onto her head. Ouch. Also, in order to gain Morticia's figure, Angelica wore a metal corset. She also had to get nail tucks and fake nails daily. She couldn't lie down in the corset and suffered from headaches frequently as a result. Nasty. It certainly does look amazing though. Number eight, where's Kitty? In the original, The Addams Family, in 1964, the Adams family had a pet lion called Kitty. Kitty doesn't appear in the film, but there's a nice little reference where Gomez is going to the vault. You can hear Gomez cracking a whip and saying, down Kitty, as a roar from the lion is heard. Number seven, Tim Burton. A lot of people get confused and think that the film's made by Tim Burton, but in reality, he had nothing to do with it at all, but he is praying for a remake. However, Tim Burton was originally meant to direct the film. He worked with screenwriters like Caroline Thompson and Larry Wilson individually. Thompson on Edward Scissorhands in 1990 and The Nightmare Before Christmas 93 and Wilson on Beetlejuice in 1988. Number six, I don't really think there's a curse. Yeah, probably not a curse, but Barry Sonnefield said he felt like there was a pervasive black cloud hanging over the film. Why? Well, here's a few reasons. Weeks into the film, Sonnefield felt a tremendous pressure in his chest as if someone was blowing a balloon up inside me, he said, then he passed out. The film's cinematographer quit shortly after this happened. His replacement then ended up stopping production for a couple of days as he was hospitalized for a sinus infection and never returned, leaving Sonnefield ending up having to just do the cinematography himself. He's not credited for it on IMDb, however. They had to shut down the Los Angeles production for several days when his wife needed major surgery in New York. Right in front of the camera, a blood vessel burst in the eye of Raul Julia, the actor who played Gomez. Hmm, maybe it was cursed. Number five out of cash. Orion Pictures had the rights to the Adams Family, however three quarters of the way through the film being shot, Orion Pictures hit financial issues and they were forced to sell the rights to Paramount Pictures. Rudin was informed that Orion Pictures had sold the film to Paramount by Andrea King, who was working for The Hollywood Reporter. Even though Rudin was also working on a movie at the time with Paramount and regularly also speaking to Orion Pictures, it turns out that he had absolutely no idea what was going on. Number four, sing the theme tune. Everyone knows the original composition for the film, it's catchy, it's timeless, but what about the other songs written for the film? Well, the other main theme tune was written and performed by MC Hammer, which was so bad it won a Razzie Award in the category of Worst Original Song. It's not great. Barry Sonnefield had not originally planned to use the theme music from the original Adams Family in the film, but ended up including it after seeing positive reactions to the early trailer. Thank God, at least there's one good tune in there. Number three. After the film premiered, children would often recognize Raul Julia as Gomez Adams when he was out in public. Julia stated that Gomez Adams was by far his favorite role, but his family said the recognition he got from playing Gomez Adams was really meaningful to him because he loved performing for children and making them feel happy wherever he got the opportunity to do so. Rest in peace, Raul. You give us so many memories to treasure. And before our top two picks, here's some very honorable mentions. Wednesday Adams is one of Christina Ricci's favorite roles ever. Bruno Kirby offered his fat suit from The Godfather Part Two to Christopher Lloyd in order to play Uncle Fester. The Adams Family car is a 1932 Picard Twin Six. Number two, we don't want an imposter. Several actors were concerned about the ambiguity as to Fester's storyline in that they just were worried he would end up being an imposter. Christina Ricci was so certain about not wanting Fester to be an imposter that she gave a plea to Rudin and Sonnefield just prior to shooting. It turns out that Christopher Lloyd playing Fester didn't actually care either way. And coming in at the number one slot, a lot of you 90s gamers might remember going to arcades. Yeah, remember those? Well, the Adams Family film spawned what is arguably the best pinball machine of all time. 
obviously inspired by the film. Absolutely great, a blast to play, and it actually ended up being the best selling pinball machine of all time. So that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you soon. Keep the ball, I have a whole bucket full.